Suppose you are given a substrate and you are asked to decide between SN1 and SN2 mechanisms. How do we go about that? Now, this largely depends upon the structure of the carbon chain or the electrophile. So, we have a very good rule of thumb in that compounds which can form relatively stable carbocations do so and opt for the SN1 pathway, and while others have to react via the SN2 mechanism. Interestingly, the structural factors which make carbocations unstable are also the factors which lead to faster SN2 reactions. For example, take tertiary butyl carbocation, and this is definitely much more stable than the methyl carbocation because of the inductive as well as the hyperconjugation effects. But a tertiary butyl bromide is a poor candidate for an SN2 reaction because the nucleophile will have to maneuver its way into the carbon center through the alkyl groups. Hence, it is always ideal for an SN2 reaction if there were only small hydrogen atoms at the carbon center. What is the advantage of this arrangement? Well, it keeps the steric hindrance to a bare minimum. And this is the reason why SN2 reactions always prefer either the primary substrates or the methyl substrates. Now, let us bring back a table, compare the effect of simple variations in structure and the feasibilities of SN1 and SN2 reactions. As you can see from this table, the secondary alkyl halides, they can react either by the SN1 mechanism or the SN2 mechanism. But we see that in both cases, the yield happens to be poor. So, if we are given a substrate and we are asked to de determine which reaction is more likely, which mechanism is more likely, how do we go about that? Whenever we have a tertiary substrate, the mechanism is always going to be SN1. And whenever we have a primary substrate or a methyl substrate, then we always choose the SN2. So, the earlier generalization that we made that if a substrate can achieve a reasonably stable carbocation, then it always chooses to go via that mechanism. For instance, look at this reaction. So, as we see, the first step is the formation of the carbocation. Now, this is achieved by protonation of the OH group. And since H2O is a very good leaving group, it leaves behind a carbocation. This carbocation is stabilized by delocalization of charge. In this case, there is just the one product, although there seem to be two competing sites for the nucleophile to attack. Had we taken an unsymmetrical allyl substrate, we likely get these products. Here, there are two different products because there are two unequal competing sites for the nucleophile to attack. Although this mechanism is SN1, the major product is governed by the steric effects. In other words, the major product is a result of the ease with which the nucleophile can approach the terminal carbon. Likewise, if we have a benzyl chloride undergoing an SN1 mechanism, first the stable benzyl carbocation is formed, followed by the nucleophilic attack only at the benzyl carbocation. So, let us tabulate the entire species. So, here we have the methyl group or the methyl substrate, followed by the primary substrate, and on the other extreme, we have the tertiary substrates. Between these two extremes, we have the allylic, benzylic, as well as secondary substrates. So, if we look at the tertiary substrates, they readily undergo SN1 mechanism. Whereas, on the other hand, if you look at the methyl as well as the primary substrates, they undergo the SN2 mechanism much more readily. But what can we say about these three which are in the middle? So, these three can either choose the SN1 pathway or the SN2 pathway. And that concludes this segment.
Thank you.